Welcome to AAU Teen Talk TV here at the Madhouse Studios. You're watching Conversations with Verdell Jones, and I'm your host, Verdell Jones. This show is dedicated to providing you with relevant, concrete information, educating you on the things that matters. So today we have a great show. I am super excited about our guests this afternoon. Uh, you know, he's going to teach us how to get our money right. So people, get your money right, listen up, Take some notes. This is going to be a very informative uh, afternoon. So again, we're looking forward to it. We have Clyde Anderson live in studio via Skype. Um, we're going to talk to him in a few minutes. So in the words of Maya Angelou, when you learn, teach, and when you get, give. Welcome to Conversations with Verdell Jones. <laughs> So as I said, we have Clyde Anderson here in our studios via Skype. Clyde Anderson is a CNN contributing uh, financial expert. He is a motivator. He is a nationally acclaimed speaker. Um, he is a teacher. He is um, a creator of uh, an income, uh, income stream creator. Uh, so he helps individuals do that. We are so excited to have Clyde here uh, this afternoon. He's also a best-selling author. His latest book, What Had Happened Was, is, uh, is available on Amazon.com, and I would encourage you to pick that up. And I just want to say just one thing. Uh, how I kind of connected with um, Clyde is through a friend of mine. A friend of mine works for CUNA, which is the uh, Ruth Shirley. She's my bestie. Uh, she works for CUNA, which is the uh, Credit Union National Association. And she was at a conference. And while she was at this conference in Philadelphia, she immediately texted me and said, you have to talk to this man. He is incredible. He knows what he's talking about. He breaks down information in such a way that you can receive it. So I'm excited that she uh, thought of me when she met him and that he took the opportunity to join us this afternoon. So I'm super excited. And without further ado, I want to introduce Clyde Anderson. So thank you, Clyde. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Great. I'm awesome. <laughs> good. Thanks for having me. Ruth is awesome. Good people know good people, so I'm glad to be here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. She is. She's awesome. Uh, I want to start out with just, if you can explain to our viewers out there, what was your journey? How, how did you begin this? I know we all start out one way or we have a plan, but then it evolves and we have to have the discernment to know which way we should go with that and what's given to us. So tell us about your journey. How did you start? What did what did you think you were going to do, uh, and and what you're doing now? Yeah, I um. So, so I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Grew up off a little street called Eight Mile Road in Detroit. And by the time I was seven, um, I would set up a TV stand in front of my apartment building there, right around five thirty, and I would sell lemon heads and now litters and things like that to people coming home from work. And I did five thirty because I knew I would have to stay all day. It was when they were coming home, and, and I made my first $10 in ones, and I thought I was rich. <laughs> and so I, I had the bug at that point, but I didn't know what entrepreneurship was. And by the time I was 11, I had one of the biggest paper routes in the neighborhood, and I started hiring the other little kids in the neighborhood to work my paper route. <laughs> and so I said, okay, I can do this. I like this. And nice. still didn't have any direction, didn't really know what it was. And so I, I knew I wanted to go to college, and I went to Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. And I always then, you know, still wasn't going the corporate route. I wanted them to teach me how to be an entrepreneur. But it wasn't until my senior year where I got it. I took a class with a guy named Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. And he wrote Think and Grow Rich, The Black Choice, and some other books uh, about wealth. And he really showed me what was possible, how to create plans, commit them to paper, uh, write the vision, make it plain, and, and really sort of know what was possible. Right. 
And at that point, um, I knew that I could do something, but I still hadn't necessarily found my place. I came out of college and I got into the mortgage business. I was 23, 24 years old in the mortgage business down in Orlando, Florida. And I grew up in a single parent household and my mother and I never had conversations about wealth building. Um, we, we consumed. Um, she took great care of me, but she taught me how to consume for the most part. And so her father was a sharecropper. She didn't know much about building wealth. And so I had to learn on my own. But as I got into the mortgage business, I got around a good group of people that helped me understand. And as soon as people would start coming to me, the first thing they would always say is, well, you see, what happened was, you know, I co-signed for my cousin and he never paid the card. Bill. Or I went through a nasty divorce and my credit got ruined. And I, and I could feel them. I related to them because I had made my own mistakes in college. I, I learned by trial and error. And I knew I wasn't, I didn't have that ingrained in me. And so I began helping these people and I learned more and more by talking and helping mm -hmm. uh, and doing. And I decided to start a publishing company in the entrepreneur that I was and to put a book out. And the book was called What It Happened Was. It was about four characters that live in a town re called Reality, somewhere between perfect bliss and rock bottom, uh, similar to the place where you and I live. And it was too good to be true, just to get by, D. Joneses, and couldn't care less. <laughs> and they were all trying to get a special deal, which was freedom, the ability to live out your dreams, to answer your questions and what you've been waiting for. So it showed what different characters would or wouldn't do to get something that's considered to be special. And to my surprise, the book took off because I was really just going to give it to my clients because I felt like I was saying the same stuff over and over again. And it was an opportunity for them to see themselves. And the book got a hold of, um, in the hands of someone from CNN. And they called me on the air. And I had already been teaching. I had already been speaking. So I was passionate about what I was doing. And when I got on the air, it was natural. I, I felt at home, and they kept calling me back. And then they finally gave me my own segment. And it was called Take It to the Bank. Um, and I homeschool first. And then we did Take It to the Bank. So I would come on every week. And um, I I've appeared on CNN for probably over 400 times. Wow talking about small business, talking about housing, talking about wealth building, talking about um, really just taking care of your finances. But what I learned too, it was more about mindset than it was about money. Mm. And that sort of began my journey. So the book, what it happened was now is in the second revision. This is 10 year anniversary. And I've written three others since, you know, I wrote that oh, first one. Okay. Um, my second one was Fundamental Wealth Principles. It came out about two years ago. And now my new book is called Where's My Change? Oh. And so that's going to be released in about 45 days. And so that's really, I, I was just going to do mortgages. You know, I came out, I said, okay, I'll do mortgages, maybe have a business on the side. But I didn't know that my calling was bigger, wow. that I, I had a calling to really help people and, and to change their perspectives about money. Because a lot of people get intimidated when you start talking about money. Mm -hmm. And I learned going around the country that it wasn't necessarily always a management issue. Sometimes it's a shortage issue. Mm. Great. That, I mean, that is, is some journey. And it's interesting how you said you started selling lemon heads and, and things like that, and you knew the right time to sell it when people were gonna you know, get it. And that kind of, it, it spiraled, because in a lot of situations, you're right, we, we don't learn how to build wealth. We, that, that's a skill that um, you know, is kind of lost, and, or not even taught, I should say. And um, so that, that's so important that we try to teach our children how to, yeah. how to learn that skill. And it, it's difficult. A lot of people do have a problem with that because they just don't know. You know, they, they, and, and if I don't have a lot of money, I really don't want to talk about it too much. Right. It's not one of my favorite topics. Is right. If my view of money is struggling right. or it's, it's not having enough or having lack and a shortage, mm -hmm. it's not one of my favorite topics at that point. Because anytime I talk about it, I'm talking about the lack position and coming from that position right. of what I need to pay. And I don't want to think about the bills that I need to pay that I can't pay. Right. And so, therefore, we often shortchange our children as well. Yes. Because we just want to kind of go get by. The majority mm -hmm. of our country is just that, you know, just to get by. Mm -hmm. We do just enough to make it. We wake up, we go to work, we eat, we come <laughs> home, we go to sleep, and we repeat it and we pay bills. Right. But there's more to it. And, and once we learn that there's more to it, then it changes our perspective. So that, that's why I'm so excited to have you here. Because I think individuals need to have that information. And it's a lack of information that really uh, kind of stops people. It is a little scary. We had talked mm -hmm. offline, uh, you know, a little bit about how, you know, talking about money sometimes intimidates me or, or makes me a little bit nervous because you have to face your fears. You have yeah. to face your mistakes. You have to, um, you know, and know how to get through it. So I'm glad we, we are definitely having this conversation. I hope our viewers uh, really get something out of it. And, and speaking of that, what's, what's the one thing you hope our viewers will get out of our conversation today? The one thing that you uh, would hope that they would get out of it? Well, one of the things, wow, one thing. I, <laughs> I think the main thing for me is what you just touched on right there as far as that fear piece. Mm -hmm. That don't fear it. Um, it's okay. And failure isn't fatal or fine. 
and I learned from my failures. I messed up. I made a lot of money. By the time I was 24, I was probably making about $200,000. Wow. And I thought I was, you know, wealthiest man ever. You know, and I, I, I threw that little credit card around and swiped like a swipe ninja. I would just swipe and swipe. <laughs> <laughs> and and so it was worn off on the back. But then you learn when you lose it. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it's not always going to be here if I don't take care of it. Right. And so I, I had a change of perspective at that point. So I think the fear piece, because a lot of us don't do things because of the fear. Mm-hmm. And the fear holds us That's back, which is false evidence appearing real. It's not real. And I learned from my greatest lessons have been from my failures and the failures of others. Mm-hmm. And so if, if I can share that and, and someone can walk away and say, you know what, I can face this. I can do this. It's not as scary. It's not as big. I'm right. bigger than my money because if I don't control my money, my money will control me. Right. So we've got to learn how to be masters of our money and mm-hmm. tell the money where to go. Name our dollars instead of letting them tell us where they're going to go. Right. So yeah. if people walk away with that, I'm happy. Okay, great. And, you know, it, it's that fear, you know, it, 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 it will come up, especially when you're talking about money. And yeah. it's also, I think, security. And, and what I mean by that, and just thinking of, you know, a lot of individuals and, and their journey is they are afraid to do things because of the security that they may have. So they don't want to take a risk and, yeah. and venture out and do other things because they're comfortable where they are. Um, you it, know, they're okay, it's, but... Yeah, it's almost a pseudo comfort. That right. Have. You mm-hmm. know, I tell people, you can get bitten by a shark standing in the shallow end too. Right. So <laughs> just because you're not swimming out to the deep don't mean you're safe. Right. You're in this place True. and they call it comfort, but they're really not comfortable mm-hmm. because a lot of people are addicted to their situation. Yes. They're addicted to lack or they're addicted to not having it. And it seems crazy to be addicted to not having enough money. But I'm, I've learned how to make payment arrangements or just make it through. And and so I do that, and it becomes habit for me. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's what I do. So just standing in the shallow end, really not comfortable, and I don't know why they call it comfort. Mm. It's a routine right. that we get stuck in. And so I think if we understand that swimming out into the deep is where the things that are waiting for you are. Mm. But we've got to take that initiative sometimes to swim. It's not easy because you're swimming with the sharks, but sometimes we got to go out there and swim. Right. Take that risk. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about financial success. So let's talk about success and how how do you define financial success? Is it something that you as an individual come up with? Is it defined? Do you define it yourself or is there really a, a definition or, or a, a plan for financial success? It's, it's all you. you determine what financial success means to you. Too often we let society tell us what financial success is. We let the mm-hmm. magazines or the television tell us that this is what financial success looks like. But financial success to me is all, you know, my needs met, my wants, you know, majority okay. of possible my wants met, yeah. but I want to be able to take care of my family. And so I want them to have more and do better and that's my why. And so we have to define what the life that we want to live looks like. Okay. And we don't do that. We live a default life too often because we think what we, you know, what's here, what's, what's in front of us. Mm-hmm. But it's not always what's in front of you is what you should be reaching for. You should be reaching for what you can't see sometimes. And so I think you have to define it for yourself. It right. may mean I have people that, you know, make $70,000 a year and they're perfectly happy yeah. because they manage it well. Because it's not what you make, it's how much you spend. Mm-hmm. And so they're not in debt. They do what they want to do. They may have two vacations a year. Right. And that's financial success to them. Mm-hmm. Somebody else may say, I want to have enough so I can feed the whole community. And that's financial success for you. Mm-hmm. So you have to define it. You have to paint that picture for you. Because once I paint the picture, my mind, I right. can see it. Right. And now I know what I'm reaching for. Right. So it's, it's really taking a self-inventory. And, it is. Right. And how you want, what your lifestyle, what you want that to be, and how you can achieve it. And, and that would be your definition of financial success. <laughs> Oh, so much beyond say a vision board because mm-hmm. if I want a certain type of car, I want to live in a certain type of neighborhood, I want to take these trips, how much will that cost you? Right. And we can look at that. Numbers are available. It's right. just a little homework to say, okay, I want that. And so I need to make this amount of money to be able to do that. Now I can back into that. Yeah. Because I, right. what will I have to do to make that sort of money? Mm-hmm. Now I can get on track because I'm motivated by what I want my life to look like. Right. The life that I want to design. So it's not just about what I see. And so many of our kids see these things or images that are portraying our community or on television and they think that's it. That's it. But yeah. To really sort of be exposed to what's possible for their lives and then set in their mind what it is. I learned a long time ago about a cap, setting a financial cap. Mm-hmm. Like what is the amount of money that you want to make over your life? You know, what would be happy if you make this every year? That's it. And so what I decided to do is this is the amount of money I want to make and everything beyond that I'll give away. Hmm. Because And people get scared with that because what if I want more? <laughs> well, say that you want more now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> say that you want right now and define that and what it looks like. And then it, it doesn't become arbitrary. It, right. it becomes focused. And when things are focused, I can see a lot better. Mm-hmm. 
So that vision board needs to have some numbers on it as well. <laughs> Where you can get it at the numbers. Sometimes you might need to go test drive that car. It's so real to you. Right, right, exactly. So why is economic empowerment uh, more important now than ever? Wow. I think because everything has shifted. This is what I call the new normal. Um, it's not the, going back to the way it used to be. You know, um, I grew up in Detroit, which is an automotive city, and right. you could have a good life by just working in the, in the factory. Mm -hmm. You could know, live living, do some overtime, double time, triple time, get a new car every year. And I watched that. I watched my family go through that. I watched a lot of people and friends that when I went to college, they stayed home like, you're crazy. We're making all this money right now. And so I think we had to understand that some of those jobs have gone away. Yeah. A lot of people lost their jobs and they lost their identity mm -hmm. because they felt that their identity was tied to that. But now we have to learn what I say going back to the basics. And I mentioned earlier, my grandfather was a sharecropper. He didn't call himself an entrepreneur. He called himself a sharecropper because he had a little plot of land that he would take care of. He had 10 children and he used that plot of land and he used his head and his hands to create something and grow something that would feed them all. And so what I tell people now is that you just have to have more than one stream of income. You know, Les Brown told me a long time ago that a mouse with one hole to crawl into is a sad rat. And so you've got to diversify. You've got to do things, but we have gifts and talents that we're not using and tapping into that could create streams of income for us. Right. And you so know now we can't. Clyde, I'm going to stop you just one second. We're going to go to a commercial break. But when we come back, I definitely want to talk about streams of income because you always yeah. hear that phrase. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to go to commercial break. Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we do 15 years. We a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. Find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy. Please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000. Or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Coach is a full-service limousine and party bus company. Family-owned and operated, we are an industry leader with over 25 years of experience in providing best-in-class luxury transportation for your special event. Whether it's your precious wedding day, an all-day wine tour out east, your high school prom, that special birthday, or just an amazing night on the town, our professional chauffeurs stand ready to ensure your special event is truly special. Galaxy Luxury Coach has one of the largest and modern party bus fleets in the New York area. Our party buses are simply nightclubs on wheels. Concert sound systems, light shows, lasers and strobes, multicolor LED lighting brilliantly lights your party bus inside and out. For corporate and more laid back events, we will cater to your specific needs and requests. What sets Galaxy aside from all others in the luxury transportation industry is our attention to detail in customizing our services to your special event. At Galaxy, it's all about you and your guests. 
Galaxy customers return time and time again because they know they can trust Galaxy to help deliver those lifetime memorable moments. Step aboard and let your Galaxy experience begin. Galaxy Before we went on break, we were talking a little bit about multiple streams of income. Clyde, can you kind of explain what, what that actually means and how individuals can kind of wrap their head around the concept of that and what they could start doing to, to be able to do, to be able to create those streams? We have to understand, again, it's just kind of diversifying. It's looking and saying, what else can I do to earn income? Mm -hmm. I may have a full-time job, but it doesn't have to stop there. And I can't rely on that job because tomorrow it could go away because I don't have control over that. Mm -hmm. So all I'm doing right now is kind of feeding it to someone's vision, someone else's vision, which is not a bad thing because, right. again, we're supposed to help each other. Yes. But I can't then neglect me and what I'm supposed to do. Um, I have several people that I help sort of see what they have because a lot of times we think what we have, everyone else has. We've all been kind of created a different way and we have different lanes and different gifts. Mm -hmm. And we have to use those to create something. And so I have a lady that's in California that she starts making sandwiches. You know, she has a full-time job, but it's mm -hmm. way out somewhere. And the, the cafeteria is expensive and the food's nasty. Huh. And so she said, you know, I'm a great cook. I'd love to have a restaurant one day. And I said, well, why don't you start cooking for your coworkers? She eats with about 10 ladies every day at lunch. And so I said, take a picture of the sandwiches, go home, take a picture, make them with a bag of chips. Set up a page and set up a PayPal page. Nice. And now I want you to advertise that to your coworkers. She started doing that and they would take orders. In the morning, she and her husband would get up and make sandwiches. She starts making an additional $2,500 a month making sandwiches for five of her coworkers. Oh my five, goodness. Five. Five people. <laughs> $2,500 a month making sandwiches. Wow. So sometimes we overthink things and we make yep. it too complicated. Right. It's not right. always about starting a multi million dollar conglomerate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about supplying my needs or filling the gaps that I may have right. in my life. Right. And so I need to create that additional stream. So she created an additional stream doing something she liked to do already. Isn't that something? And so many of us do things and, and, and we're just not tapping into them to maximize the opportunity. Wow. That is, that's amazing. I, I mean, uh, it, it's interesting that you, you talk about the sandwiches. Uh, just on a personal note, my mom is a baker. And mm -hmm. my mom and dad are both, they worked, you know, government, state, state jobs for 30 years and got the pension, but they always had an entrepreneurial spirit to them. So my mom is a baker. So she used to do a similar thing. She would take orders. My father would make the deliveries. And it was about using her talents. My dad has the gift to gab. She has the talent to make the baked goods. That's it. That's it. <laughs> she had a built-in sales force right there. That's right. <laughs> That's what it's about. And so we overlook those things. Mm -hmm. Once we sit down and think about it, we all have something. Right. We just need to figure out what it is and, and how we tie it in because if you can solve a problem mm -hmm. or fill in the need and let people know that you can do it, right. you'll never want for anything. Right. That's absolutely true. Uh, so let's talk about some mistakes, some common financial mistakes that people make. What what are they? Uh, one is delaying, grat not delaying gratification. You know, we, we see things and we want them and we buy them. You know, instead of saying, well, let me think about this for 24 hours and see if I really want it. Because a lot right. of times you don't really want it and you don't really need it. So And we confuse our needs and wants. We think our wants are needs and our needs are wants, you know, and we buy things because we call it a need and it's really not a need. So we've got to really understand what that the difference between that is. But I think that's one. And also spending more than we make, you know, yeah. we, we spend more because, again, it's not about how much you make, it's how much you spend. I can make two hundred thousand dollars and look at someone that makes fifty thousand and they may live better right. because I'm two hundred and fifty mm -hmm. in debt. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all relative. And we've got to look at that and understand it. But I think those are some of the mistakes and also not looking at the financing. Just ignoring them for right. living by default. You know, I've got a shortage, but I'm not going to look at it. Mm -hmm. it. May only be 200, but after overdraft fees and everything else, it turns to 600. Right. Because I, I know I have more month than money, and so we just kind <laughs> of have this default put blinders on and just sort of ride through life. Yeah. And I think that's a big mistake because the fear of looking at it, it can be scary because you're looking at it and say, "This is not enough. This is not going to make it." That's the beginning. That's the start. Mm. It's the genesis of being able to do something different or change your mindset. Again, right. because if we can change our minds, we can change our lives. Right. It's not so much about the dollar. It's about what we think about. Because the, the my money is a byproduct of my thoughts and actions. This is a byproduct of how I think and what I do in terms after I thought about it. Mm -hmm. Because I can think about something and not do it, and it makes no change in my life. But after I think about it and I act on it, now it can change. So the money becomes a byproduct of the action I took. Right, right. It's all about making those... Uh 
choices. <laughs> That's what it's about. Right, right. And not, uh, so uh, a couple of things you mentioned, not putting your head in the sand and ignoring yeah. the issue, not spending more than you make uh, yeah. is, is, you know, is also key. Well, we want to keep up, you know, with the Joneses. Oh, that's, what? that's that piece. Right. We want to exactly. impress people that we don't even like. Right. We don't even know. <laughs> you know? And right. here we are trying to impress them with what we have. Right. And we're not doing it a lot of times for ourselves. You know, I live in Atlanta, and I call it the home of the middle class millionaire. Mm -hmm. You know, because everyone wants to look like wealth, but yes. everybody doesn't have it. Right. Absolutely. And so we rather have that look than actually going out earning and, it and earning. getting what yeah, we want. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is very true. That's very true. Uh, so how can people kind of focus... Um, on improving their financial situation? Like, they, those were some of the mistakes, but how can they begin that process of improving their financial situation? I think the first step is understanding who you are. Okay. And I think that's a little bit different than what a lot of people say, because if you don't know who you are, nothing's gonna work, regardless of what your, your endeavor is. But I need to know who I am and what I was created for and how mm -hmm. I operate. And a disc profile is a great way to even get started, doing a disc profile. And I've got a free one on my site, but there are a lot of free ones out there. Mm -hmm. But you can go take a disc profile and see how I'm wired, see how I respond to different things. You know, especially it's good for married couples because how, your way of money or your view of money right. may be totally different than your spouse's view of money. So we begin there by understanding how I'm wired. Once I know how I'm wired, I then can say, okay, I got two goals. Where do I want to go? And being realistic about where I am, mm -hmm. then where do I want to go? What's the goal? Because so often we don't write those and commit them to paper and say right. this is the goal and we don't have any goals. Mm -hmm. And so if I, if I write that goal now, it becomes real to me and I can see how do I back into that. Right. And I also have to have a strong why. Why do I want to get my money right? Why do I, is it just to buy more stuff or is it to make sure I'm taking care of my kids so they can go to college? Mm -hmm. Or that I can have a home for my family in a safe neighborhood right. and put them in the right school. You know, what's the why? You know, why is that fuel that's going to push you, that's going to propel you and make you go forward and not just write numbers on a sheet? Because anybody can fill in numbers on a sheet. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants a budget like nobody wants a diet. Right. Nobody wants a diet. It's not something, oh, I want a diet. No, we don't want that. We want financial success. So I call them financial success plans. I want to create a financial success plan, and now I can tie it to my goals. It becomes real. When my goals become bigger than my vices, I do things differently. Mm -hmm. I got to make my goals bigger than that pair of shoes. Because right. now I'm not going to buy that pair of shoes because it's tied to a goal. That money right there that I, I worked three, four hours to earn is important to me. And I've got to know that because my time is one of my most valuable assets. Because the U.S. Mint manufactures about $650 million every day out of a machine. Mm -hmm. I can always go and make more money. But mm -hmm. I can't go get more time. I get 86,400 seconds in each day. Right. And I bet if each one was a dollar, we'd take better care of it. And so we've got to learn how to invest our time well and know what an hour of our time is worth. Mm -hmm. When you know that, you stop doing certain things. That's true. You don't do things the same way when you know what your true worth is. Right. And so that's the beginning. That's true. And then it's really now committing those numbers to paper. Mm -hmm. What are my expenses? Go through and just write your expenses and how much income. And I can decide if I have a gap or a surplus. If I've got a gap, I've got to identify how do I fill this gap. But if I've got a surplus, I've got to understand mm -hmm. that people such thing as extra money. Right. So I've got to name those dollars and tell them where they're going to go. Mm. Right. That, that's that's interesting because one of the, um, I know we do, uh, you know, I have a hard time saying that word b -b budget and <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no one likes to say that word. But the, the interesting thing is you have to do your income versus your expenses. That, I mean, you just have to do that. You, there's no way of getting around that. But a lot of times what happens is, you, you know, you get that paycheck and you pay those bills and on paper, it seems that you have a surplus, but by the end of the month, you're out of money. How does, how can people avoid that trend? It's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, you break that $20 bill. Right. And by the time you get home, you didn't buy anything else, but you it, thought you did and you right. don't know what happened to the whole 20. Right. And it, it goes that we don't track it. And especially now in the age of debit cards, we swipe. <laughs> And so those $5, $10, $15, $17, $17, those are the devils that are in the details. Mm -hmm. If we don't look at those, they will eat away at our financial future. Mm -hmm. So we've got to understand that everything matters. You know, everything yeah. adds up, whether it's two pennies, they add up. And so I need to be conscious of that. And I need to know what I'm spending because the numbers don't lie. Right. And so if that's it, you know what I'm making, now I know what I'm spending, but we don't account for a lot of the miscellaneous. We don't account for running to the store. Mm -hmm. We don't account for picking up a bag of chips here and there. We've got to account for all of those things because it's part of our financial life. This is what we're doing. This is how we're using them. And so I've got to make sure that I'm tracking those things. Mm -hmm. I've got to make sure because now I look at it, I may not do things the same way. I call it a bank statement bio. 
Mm-hmm. Go pull the last three months of your bank statements mm-hmm. and highlight all the things that you spent under twenty dollars. Right. And and too often we don't reconcile anymore. We let the, the bank tell us what it is online. Yes. We don't keep a ledger. And you know when I, when I learned that uh, Rockefeller kept a ledger. Um, it changed how I thought about different mm-hmm. things because Rockefeller was one of the richest men in the world and he kept a ledger when he bought a piece of gum and it showed you what he was spending on. And I said, well, if this man was doing this, there was something to it because he needed to track and he knew those dollars added up and we've got to make sure that we understand that as well. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about how Clyde helps individuals with, uh, with their finances. Back in a moment. Hi, I'm Tatiana, and I'm a person in long-term recovery from heroin addiction. It was really, really hard, waking up in the morning, not knowing what to do, needing my next bag. I was so lost, but I'm here today to tell you that there is a solution. When I was in my active addiction, I didn't realize that there was another way of life. I thought that that was the only way, because it felt so good to get high, but it was all an illusion, and I didn't realize that. But today, being four years clean and sober, my life is absolutely amazing. I'm able to travel. I don't need a drink. I don't need a drug. I'm just happy being with myself. I couldn't understand for many years why. Why was I doing this? It's because I was an addict, but I didn't know it. Today, many kids are becoming addicted to drugs and alcohol, but they don't know exactly what they're getting into until they're out of it. And it's our job, it's my job, to stand for these kids, stand for their recovery, and fight for their addiction. So I'm the president of Onward Forever, and I provide recovery services and support. And we're here to help. We're here to just listen. Anything that we can do to help. If you need me, this is how you get a hold of me. Please call 347-244-1550. 347-244-1550. I developed this company to help you, our families, and our community to fight this crisis on Long Island and in our nation. Thank you. You gotta be highly skilled. You gotta be highly skilled. You understand that? Are you well versed there? Are you very smart man? Hit me with some funny shit. My shit's twisted. Tell me something. Tell me something. What do you have right there? That's awesome. Well, that's a big. That's nice. You know damn well. You know damn well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Sir. Hey, are you interested in you twisted talent? Twisted talent. Twisted talent. Twisted talent. Twisted talent. Twisted talent. You see what I'm saying? You understand me? And if you can't whip out answers like that, that man is laughing with his door to commercial break, punch your fucking mouth loose. You understand me? Time is up, sir. You understand me? You're on. You're you're the man. All right. Give me your name now. I'm sorry. My name is Willie. Willie, where you working at? We are twisted. We are awesome. We are awesome. Love awesome. awesome. Can you repeat that question again? Question again?
just saw was a little intro. Um, it, it's an intro that Clyde has on his website. It gives you kind of an insight about what he does, um, the experiences that, he, that he's had, and how he actually helps individuals. Uh, in the video, it, it talks about how he's helped thousands of people kind of live out their dream or focus their goals um, on what they want to do financially. So who is your ideal client? I know you're an entrepreneur. Um, so who is your ideal client? Uh, my ideal client is someone that wants to get from where they are to where they want to be. Mm -hmm. It's someone that says, hey, I, I don't know it all. I don't have the answers, but I know I need to do something different. And so it, it's brought from that perspective, but it's really a lot of the people that I end up hel helping. I, I have a, one program called Ideas to Income, mm. and I help a lot of people that, that are, they have a full-time job, but they want to make an additional stream of income. So it's not saying they want to throw caution to the wind and just totally leap of faith right now. And some right. of them do, mm -hmm. but everybody doesn't. So it's people that say, I want something different. I know I've got something inside of me that I can do. I just don't know how to pinpoint it. I want to figure it out. So it, it's them. It's the people that... You know, they, they have big visions, big dreams, but they don't know how to tie it in together to work within their lives. And so those are the people that I help. I help people show them that, you know, where their change is. And that's, again, the title of my new book, Where My Change. So I've got Where My Change Program of Money Mindset Experiences, mm -hmm. where I show you that how to get this right. Because when you get this right, right, it changes things. You know, I learned a long time ago at the Harvard School of Divinity, they teach discipline of thought before they teach doctrine. And so that let me know before I change any congregation or anything, I've got to get here. And if I can get here, I can help you so much more. I can make you, you know, know that you have to affirm who you are and you've got to believe it. Because if you don't believe that it's possible, you might as well just stop now. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to believe that it's possible. So it's, it's my clients are the ones that want to believe or already believe that they can do something different. They can make a change. So if it's just getting your finances together and creating a good foundation, you have to tell anybody that's going to start a business or anything, that's first. Mm -hmm. Because you can't build anything on shaky ground. And entrepreneurship is not the savior for your personal finance issue. Right. It's not going to fix everything. If anything, it's going to make it worse before mm -hmm. it gets better. And so you've got to understand that. So I help people understand those components. But then I also help people do things as far as write books to become or follow the journey that I did. Well, I had to become the expert and I had to learn through trial and error. Yeah. And if you've got a voice, you've got to use it. And that's just another way to turn your ideas to income. Right. And then we do the same thing for high schools and college students. We created a simulator. Uh, it's called uh, the My Financial Life Simulator. Goes into high schools, colleges, partners with other nonprofit organizations to create an experience where all the kids start off at 25 years of age. Um, they get to choose a salary. Well, not choose a salary. They get to choose a profession. Right. And the GPA helps determine what their income level is. It's almost like the credit score. And so it's going to determine how much oh. you can make. And so it's <laughs> okay. a real life experience. They get to choose their lifestyle. Will it be frugal? Will it be modest? Will it be higher end? Will I be thrifty or not? Do I want this car? Do I need the rims? Do I not need the rims? Do I need the Mercedes? Or do I want a Ford? Right. What is it? And they can get to like make these decisions, and a lot of times they don't get to make until they're out in the real world, and they get to bump their heads then that's going to you know last forever or years down the road instead of making it in a controlled environment. So we give them an opportunity to make these decisions in a right. controlled environment, but let them go through the motions themselves to see exactly what this what looks, like. looks like. You know, how do I budget? Do I got to decide? Do I take the bus or do I take, you know, get a car? Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting because sometimes yes. I'll go and do it and the young ladies will say, well, I got to get my nails and my hair done, right. but I don't have any more money. And those, again, we, we, we confuse our needs and wants mm -hmm. because that we've told ourselves that that's a need. I've got to go to the manicures and get my nails done. Right. But we haven't learned how to be frugal and thrifty sometimes, yeah. you know, to live like no one else so we can live like no one else. Right, like. right. That's the uh, the simulator. We have a little video that we'll show in a little bit, uh, not, not at this minute, but we're going to show in a little bit. Just listening to the students also and give their testimony on how the, uh, the presentation or the simulation really had an impact on them. Um, in the district that I work in, we do have a program that's it's similar. It's not exactly the same, but listening to the students, just as you said, about, oh, man, you know what? I'm not going to get that car because I can't afford it. it it's such a, you know, I, I am, uh, I was a former, I'm, I'm always a teacher, but I was a business teacher uh, for a number of years, for nine years. So that real life experience and teaching students how to manage their money and the financial literacy is so important. And unfortunately, yeah. it's not um, it's not required. In yeah, most, it's not required. You know, and I tell people we got now it's time to stop saying what we don't have because now we've got a solution. Right. It's not the schools, but we can take it to the school. Right. And we can partner. And we partner with the schools, and we stay in touch with these kids. Yes. Because it's not about a one-time oh, experience. Oh, nice. Okay. We stay in touch with them, and we we become that resource to them. I like to expose them to other things and show them the other side, but I also know what they respond to. 
So being in Atlanta, I've been fortunate mm. to be around a lot of these entertainers. And so I'll bring a guy like Ludacris right. and say, hey, Ludacris' first investment was a home. He bought a house as an investment property. Mm -hmm. So he didn't go and buy the flashy cars and all those other things, but he had training. His mother trained him, right, and showed him what to do and start businesses. And we don't get to see the side, but a lot of them respond to that because they just see that one side of the flashiness. Mm -hmm. They don't see the frugal side of these guys that make millions of dollars, yeah. and they know that it may not last always. Right. You know what? Let's just jump into um – you know, this program, because we, you know, AAU, All About Us, deals with teens and, and, and those who are, you know, are working with teens and parents and all of that. Now, how, say, for example, if we're not in Atlanta and we're still interested in having a program like this in our schools or through our, an organization, how would we, how can we do that? How can we be able to yeah. do something like that? I've got this thing called Quick Flyers that I have with Delta. I have fun, we'll travel. So we go all around the country. Okay. And we plug right into them. So if you are, wherever you are, just let us know that you're interested in it. And we bring the whole structure and plop it in so you don't have to do all the work. Ah. And so that's what makes it easy. So it's not just here in Atlanta, you do it across the country. Nice. And so we would love to hear with people that say, hey, this would be perfect for my school, this would be perfect for our organization or a right. nonprofit. And we'll set up and structure it all based on who your kids are and come deliver. Nice. So it's a, it's a package that you would provide individuals to be able to uh, have this experience no matter where they might be. You got it. Okay, that's awesome. Um, one, you know, we're, we're going to talk, I'm going to show the video and then we maybe can talk a little bit more about that because I, I just, I, you know, I have a, a passion for being able to teach kids financial literacy. It's so important and it's not required, but, yeah. you know, with individuals like you who have uh, programs that can help with that, it's... It, it it may you know it's it's great it's a wonderful thing for our students. Um, let's just go back to the individually, like ha helping individuals. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest obstacles that you've helped individuals overcome in reference to financial um, situations? Uh, one of the things I think again we talked about the belief is believing that you can, mm -hmm. and, and helping people to affirm who they were created to be and right. who they are and what's inside of them. Because sometimes it takes someone else seeing it because we're too close to them. So sometimes it takes somebody else speaking into your life and saying it, but sometimes we don't receive those well. Right. And, you know, it's like not receiving a, a good compliment. Now, anytime I get a compliment, I need to marinate on it for a few minutes because they may be telling you something yes. that you realize that, that you have, right. that you can use. And so you want to be thankful for it, you want to marinate on it and see exactly how you want to process it from there. So I've helped people be able to see that piece, but also begin to say, I need a plan. I need a plan of action because, again, we can't live by default. So I've helped a lot of people create plans. I've helped them see, okay, what can I do? I've got an idea, but I don't know how to connect it and really make it make money for me. You know, because you can ideas are a dime a dozen until you act on them and you implement something yeah. uh, to change it and create structure and a model around it. It's just that an idea. It's like saying I have a dream. A dream is just a dream until you put some deadlines on it. Then it mm -hmm. becomes a goal. Right. And so we've got to make sure that we're doing that. So I help a lot of people see those components. I help them, again, create that blueprint. Because without that blueprint, it's a little shaky. But if I can see the whole thing of what I want my life to look like, mm -hmm. it becomes so much easier to plug it in. Right. And so we have to do that. But then again, telling your story sometimes is therapeutic as well. So I get people to talk through uh, it and to see exactly what it is. And sometimes that turns into a book. Sometimes it turns into a blog. It. it just really depends. We all have something that we can use to help each other. And so I like to pull that out of people and see what it is and help create models to go ahead and make it work in their life. Nice. We... You had talked a little bit, um, just a little bit ago, about a profile, creating a profile. Um, and I, I, I didn't catch the first part of it. Um, you said it was on your website. What is that uh, profile? Oh, uh, D-I-F-C, profile. And what it tells you is it's what dominant personality is. It'll ah, tell you okay. how passive you are or, you know, if you're dominant or you're a driver in this area, um, how you respond to different stimulus. Okay. And so it's great for couples, again, when you're dealing with money, um, because I may be really passive as it relates to money, and okay. my wife may not be. But we always come into conflict because we don't know each other's styles as it relates to that. So that DISC profile, D-I-S-C profile, um, you can Google it, pull one up uh, online, and, and it's just a great tool to begin. Mm -hmm. to even know yourself and how you respond to certain things and know the best areas where you should be to overcome your hurdles, obstacles. Because if we don't know myself, it, it, it's hard to overcome any obstacle. If I know that, you know, if I, I only can jump two feet, 
the hurdle is three feet, I mm-hmm. think a little bit of help. Right. <laughs> so uh, I know I'm going into the situation that I'm good in these areas, but I need someone to help me in these areas. Once I know where I'm good, I can then go out and solicit the people I need to help me because I don't have to know everything. Mm-hmm. Henry Ford said a long time ago, he didn't know everything. He, he, he didn't know it, but he had three buttons on his desk. And he said, if there's a question I don't know, I'll push one of these buttons and believe me, I will get the answer. answer. Right. So it's surrounding <laughs> ourselves again with people that can give you those answers. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So so that profile is like a, a financial Myers-Briggs kind of thing. It's <laughs> OK. All right. And, you know, it just you were saying for couples, it's important for them to, uh, you know, a lot of individuals, they get into a relationship, they plan to get married and they really don't know what their money habits are. So I think yeah. that's a great a great tool for them to use to kind of begin to talk about finances and how, you know, they see it. <laughs> yeah, well, I call them credit dates, too. You need to have a credit date. Anybody you're ready to get into a serious relationship with, mm-hmm. have a credit date. We bring your credit reports to the table. <laughs> everybody looks at everybody's stuff, but I need to know what I'm buying. That's right. We what we're getting and it shouldn't be, a, it doesn't have to be a deal stopper, right. but I don't want to go in blinders either. Right, so at least you know. Up, and then we can start having those conversations about people because it's so important. Right. And you know what? Also, it's interesting because, you know, we were talking about making mistakes financially. Uh, you know, I know that we've made mistakes. We, we got married very young. We had no idea what we were doing as far as money is concerned. How do we get young people, young adults? Like, I have two children. One's 19, one's uh, 23, or will be 23. How do we get young people uh, engaged in this conversation? And, and just getting them aware of, of you know, finances. Uh, you know what? We're going to answer that question when we come back. We're going to go to a commercial break. All right. Sounds good. Candles are blown out after the last toast of the night. Cambridge Paving Stones with Armor Tech stand the test of time. Beautifully designed, built to last. Only Cambridge Paving Stones have Armor Tech, our unique process that produces a rich, distinctive color. Create your own memories with Cambridge Paving Stones. Visit CambridgePavers.com. Cambridge Paving Stones with Armor Tech. Dunkin' Donuts are always fresh. I made the donuts. We make them at least twice every day. Time to make the donuts. Not a few kinds, like supermarket. Donuts. Time to make the donuts. But up to 52 varieties. The donuts. (laughs) Time to make the donuts. I made the donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. Up to 52 varieties, fresh day and night. No supermarket can say. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Okay, so before we left, we were talking about getting young people involved, young adults involved in this process. So how can we do that? I think it's more about application than theory. You know, we can talk theory to a blue in the face of what could be, what's possible, and what might be. Mm-hmm. But until they actually can apply it, that's where I really learn. We learn through application by doing. And so I think that's how you get them involved and find out what they're interested in. Okay. You know, what do they really want to be? And then what is it going to take to be that? And we just did a music camp where I, had, I showed kids the music business this summer. And we went to a studio. We had the rappers come in and, and some of the people, but the kids were excited about this. So now I had their ears and their attention. Right. I could go back and show them finances. In order to do that and be that, you need to have this. And so now it becomes a dangling carrot. If you can do this and do this right, you can own this business. If you do this and you can do this right, you can do this. And so it's figuring out what do they want to do and tell them what is it going to take to be in that position to do that. And a lot of times that's where they change and say, well, you know what, I'm not going to do these things anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it like this because I understand 
That's what it takes. And I, I need to model success. I show people how to model success. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, but model success and make it your own. Right. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, programs. We had mentioned the um, Financial Life Simulator uh, <laughs> presentation that you do. And before we get into that, uh, you know, we did talk about that, but I want to show a little clip uh, in reference to the program and hear from the children's perspective on how it impacted them. So we're going to show that. Hey, this is Clyde Anderson, your economic renewal expert. You may have seen me on CNN where I've appeared over 400 times. Here to talk to you today about my financial life simulator. For so long, we've been saying that financial literacy is not in the schools. Now it's time to stop talking about it and do something about it. My kids learn a lot of things in school, but they're not learning how to handle their financial life. You may be saying, what is a My Financial Life Simulator? My Financial Life Simulator is an opportunity where we go into the schools, create an opportunity to step into reality, somewhere between perfect bliss and rock bottom. Similar to the place where you and I live. They all start off at 25 years of age. They're given a job with an entry level salary. We set up booths and allow them to simulate reality. They get to choose their lifestyle. What kind of car will they drive? Do you want a used car? You want a BMW? You want a Mercedes? Will you have a car note? Or will you save your money to pay for the car in full? Do you know what it is to sign a loan application? Do you understand your credit report? Do you know what it means to have student debt? We want kids to make mistakes, but we want them to make the mistakes early on in a controlled environment where they don't have to pay for those mistakes for the rest of their lives. We have a responsibility to the next generation. If we don't do it, who will do it? We have a responsibility. My role is to bring this simulator to your youth. We've got to change the next generation. We can't keep doing the same thing expecting different results. Our youth are in danger, in danger of not knowing, We're in danger of staying illiterate, in danger of not being able to control their own personal finances. You and I had to learn by default. We made a lot of mistakes. I know I made a lot of mistakes. Do you want the next generation to have to bump their heads the same way we did? We want to equip them to be able to be productive members of society. We want to make sure that we're giving them an opportunity. They'll get to decide where they want to live. Do they rent? Do they buy? Will they live with parents? Will they take mass transit? Will they have a car? Do they want a car? No. Will they want to make sure that they're being pampered? Do they need hair done, nails done, manicure too? It's interesting to see the results and it's interesting to see what we've seen from kids that have gone through the program. I was able to budget my money well. Yeah, I went to this class. I know I can do this in real life. You may think you have a lot of money, but you need to budget save some money just in case because you know things do pop up. Anyone that has any sort of interest or wants to basically figure out how more abundant their future can become, this is the perfect class for it. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. And that's what I learned. At this age, I want to, you know, buy what's nice or what I think is cool that for other people to like. And like, I need to like budget and manage it better. And, and this class is you that. I've had an experience that I can take from generation and generation to come. Something that I will never forget. First thing I learned is that it's all about your mindset and it has to always be positive. But you have to make certain sacrifices in order to get to a certain levels in your life. Learn to budget your money and make things satisfy you according to your level. Never give up. It's time to educate our kids now. It's time to make sure they understand. It's time to give them an opportunity, give them a hand up, and let them be able to overcome any obstacles because they're equipped. They're prepared for any adversity. They're prepared for the decisions that they're going to have to make. Emergencies don't hurt as bad if you prepare for them. They know how to save money. They understand how to read a credit report. We show students how to build a foundation for financial success. We learn by doing, not by hearing. Seems like it would make sense to allow the young adults to actually do it. Hmm. Do you want the expensive clothes? That's it. Okay, what we just watched was a little clip of the um, financial simulator presentation. We were talking about that earlier, uh, but I thought it was nice to hear from the students' perspective, you know, what they experienced. And we did, you know, uh, Clyde did share a little bit about that, but what do you see um, as far as the students keeping in contact with you about you know the presentation after i think that the big thing for me is seeing that they continue to want to have questions mm -hmm. and a lot of us have questions so you can imagine the questions that they have but i get different things as they continue We've been doing this for a few years and they'll get ready to go to college and they're like what credit card should i get when i'm going to college what's the best one and i'm able then to kind of sew it to them and let them know and but also remind them how to use it they remember well i remember you told me don't do this and we got to remember those things stick right. and, and they hear it, they can remember it and they know why. 
You know, a lot of times we tell kids just don't. You know, growing up, you know, money was that was grown folks' business. We don't right. really necessarily talk about that. We, we don't did. give a why just because right. I said so. Right. But our kids want to know why and, and what that means and should I do that and why shouldn't I do that? And what do you mean it's a trap? And so you have to show them and share that stuff with them. But it, I love that because the kids really get to run it. They get to see what it's truly like to fill out a loan application. They get to look at the credit report or, you know, a credit no, report, credit report. Uh, and they get to see these things in real life. Well, how do I open a bank account? The basic things in life that we're going to do so much in life that we haven't learned early on. And so that's what the beauty of it is to me, that they get these experiences that they're going to keep with them for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Financial literacy uh, is, is so, such a needed discussion, not only for students or children but for adults as well <laughs> you know it yeah. goes back to saying you know getting that information uh, you also have a program called where's my change and what yeah. makes that program unique? first of all what is it and what makes that program so unique one of the things you know i've got a new book coming out called where's my change as well and i think mm -hmm. that question um kind of looms for a lot of people they want to change they want to do something different but they don't know how. So it comes from two perspectives of right. mindset and money. Mind you know, we deal with the mindset and we deal with the money. So right. in that basic program, that's what we're really looking at is get this right. And then we can go ahead. We can detox here, get some of those thoughts out. Cause a lot of us have a poverty mindset um, that we've gotten honestly. And, and it's not a bad thing until we realize that we can't change it. If you decide not to change it, it could be a bad thing, but we come from that place where we haven't been taught about wealth. And so we've got those. And so it's eliminating that first, and then creating that foundation for financial success. Not creating a budget, but in that financial success <laughs> basis right. and the foundation. And that's where we begin. And so that's the, the, the starting point. And that's where's my change? It's finding it. Where's my change mentally? Where's my change in my money? Right. You know, I need to be able to locate it. I need to know where it is. Mm -hmm. It goes back to that conversation about uh, figuring out where your dollars are going. Taking yes. a look at your, you know, three months worth of bank statements and kind of seeing where is the money going? And I think, right. right, and a lot of people, uh, as you said before, they let the bank do the ledger for you. Like, I honestly can say, I don't look at my bank ledger unless I'm trying to reconcile, you know, bills that I may have paid to make sure that they, you know, uh, they right. withdrew from my account. So the balance is a true balance and, you know, <laughs> nothing's waiting to come out. We give the bank too much credit. We do. <laughs> too much bank, too much credit in our financial lives. Right. Because. You know, they could be taking two dollars and fifty cents from you every month, and, and you would know. Happen. You would. You. No. I, I would. I can honestly say, and that's a bad thing that I would yeah. honestly not know if they did. A couple of times, you know, I, I'll look at it, but again, it's mo mostly just to figure out, um, you know, whether or not a, a bill has it's cleared, so to speak. Right. <laughs> so um, we're just trying to work passive. We're, we're passive. Very passive. In our final life. Right. Instead of really being engaged and active. Engaged in. Right. And I, I look at it this way: if they're taking two thousand fifty cents from me and they do that to a hundred thousand people, right? You know how much money they're making. You right. Know, by doing that, I'm just don't want to give them money. They make enough money as it they is. Make, exactly. Give. Exactly. And that's so that's so true. It's just um, we we are passing. I think with with technology, it it's easier for us to do that. So you know, I would look at my my parents. They're doing it old school. They don't bank online, so mm -hmm. they're doing the you know they're reconciling everything pen and paper so you know they keep track of every dollar and they don't use their debit card they use cash so it does it makes a big big difference when you're uh you know when you're actually looking at it so i think that suggestion of looking at three months worth of bank statements is a great one <laughs> and yes, then track, and even try tracking your spending for a whole week right just do a whole week and track and write down everything you buy right for a week. You can even look at that and say, wow, okay, yeah. hey, wait a minute. Right. You might need to do things a little different. Right, exactly. You might be, I'm sure people would be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, one of the things also that, that I noticed, um, you know, as, as I was looking on information, um, was the program uh, Spending with a Purpose program that helps yeah. communities. And that kind of caught my attention. What, uh, we have a couple more, a uh, couple minutes left. Uh, we might, I think we're wrapping up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just like, uh, like 30 seconds on what that program is about. Spending with a Purpose, a program is close to my heart because it's based in Detroit where I'm from. I partner with a, the organization there to get the stores that we frequent to give money back to the community. Mm -hmm. So we can fund our nonprofit activities. We can fund the programs for the kids after school. But if I'm using I'm buying with you every day for a year, mm -hmm. I think something that you may want to do to help me and my community. 
And so we've got several stores that are saying, hey, we'll give back. It's almost like a cash rewards program. And so if so many people from this community come in and buy, you're going to give back. Because you want to be here in our community, but you don't want to give anything. So we want to get these people and call them on the carpet and say, you got to give. And so it's been great from that standpoint because we've been able to fund a lot of programs and help a lot of kids that wouldn't have opportunities otherwise. Great. That is a great pro. That's a great program, and, and it makes sense. People are yeah. spending money there. Why can't yeah. they give back? It it just makes sense. Um, Why not? We'll, we'll keep using you. Just give back. Right. <laughs> so, Clyde, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, uh, what's the best way that they can reach out to you? They can visit my website at clydeandersononline.com, or they can even send me an email at ca at clydeandersononline.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do answer those. I um, mean, you can find you know join the movement on the website and get a part of our newsletter and our updates. Nice. Uh, reach out if there's something that. You know, you know that you want to change in your life. I want to help you change. It. Okay. And that's really what it's about. I call an economic renewal expert or a specialist mm-hmm. because I want to change your personal economy. I want to make sure that, you know, we can, if the personal economy is, is not solid, then the rest of your world is going to be a little topsy turvy. Yes, so absolutely. reach out to me there and I'd love to talk to you. Okay. Well, I want to thank Clive for coming uh, to our studio live via Skype. So much information. It was a pleasure speaking with you and having this discussion. Uh, I also want to thank our sponsors, uh, AAU, Teen Talk TV, and Radio, uh, Roger and Shavana Johnson, the, the CEO and CFO of the Whitney E. Johnson Foundation. And the Whitney E. Johnson Foundation is dedicated to providing uh, tutoring and mentoring and counseling to our youth. And they are also the executive producers of uh, Teen Talk TV and Radio. So we thank them. Uh, If anybody would like information on uh, this show, Conversations with Verdell Jones, you can go to my website, which is deliteach.com. That's D-E-L-I-T-E-A-C-H.com. We'll have the show posted as well. You can follow me on Twitter at deliteach. Um, so I just, again, want to thank Clive for, you know, coming out this afternoon and sharing information with us. And you'll be able to see, uh, you know, this show again on, on my website as well. Uh, so join us every Thursday. We, we have, you know, great shows on AAU Teen Talk. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again.